What's up good ride lovers? Did you ever think about how much money did you spend to modify your own motorcycle? Well, I did my calculations. The first thing every self-respecting motorcycle owner does to a newly purchased machine is removal, removal, removal. The internet is full of guides on how to slim down the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Therefore, a few days after purchase, I removed the front and rear fender extensions engine burn shields and the rear passenger grab handle. This treatment didn't significantly change the weight of the motorcycle but improved its appearance for exactly zero dollars. When removing the fender extension, caution is required not to damage the rear lamp wiring and mounting holes in the fender of course remains. However, it is necessary to do this for a good looking bike. The only person who will feel the effect of this modification is a biker in an open face helmet riding behind you when the mud from the road sprays all over his face. Removing the front fender extension has a more significant impact on protection against road debris such as mud, rocks, stud, dust and water. Without it, those elements will reach various parts of the motorcycle, including the oil cooler, oil filter, engine and even the bottom of the fuel tank. Additionally, driving on wet roads will result in water flooding your shoes and legs at every turn. Some motorcyclists also remove the center stand to reduce weight and increase speed. However, it is good to have it when lubricating the chain, but it's quite dangerous to get your hands anywhere close to the rotating chain and sprockets. Adjustable brake and clutch levers are another popular modification I make on almost every motorcycle I own. I replace them with inexpensive levers from AliExpress made by FXCNC company. This small change significantly improves ride comfort and enhances the bike's appearance. Replacing the levers is a simple process involving unscrewing a few screws, losing the clutch cable, replacing the levers and tightening everything back. When buying this lever levers on AliExpress make sure to choose the correct length. If you have bar and mirrors, avoid buying levers that are too long as they can interfere with the mirror. Measure the available space before purchasing. Bar and mirrors are my preferred choice because they give the motorcycle a stylish look. While I would prefer riding without mirrors at all for aesthetic reasons, the law requires their use. The bar and mirrors I install are high quality black anodized aluminum mirrors mounted on the inside of the handlebars. Adapters were included to fit different handlebar types. When installing bar and mirrors, it is necessary to purchase blind screws to replace the original regional mirror mounting points. I replaced the standard 22mm chrome handlebar with a thicker 28mm black handlebar from China. This change required not only purchasing a new handlebar, which is obvious, but also changing the mounting brackets to the front shelf. I found a simple and inexpensive solution using universal mount for ATVs. The x Moto handlebar works well and it is lighter than the original one as it is made of aluminum. Replacing the handlebars and grips requires patience and cleverness, especially when transferring the buttons and the controls from the original handlebar to the new one. You may need to drill new holes in the handlebar or remove positioning pins from the control sets. Perhaps the most affordable and easiest change I've ever made to my motorcycle is replacing the handlebar grips. It's a simple process and the cost of new grips is so low that I've already gone through three sets. I just wasn't able to decide. For those who haven't tried swapping out stock grips for others, let me tell you, the difference can be significant. For instance, the brown transparent grips that you can see on the photo, though retro looking are seemingly perfect for this bike, become uncomfortably hard in temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius, causing hand pain. This doesn't mean the factory grips are the best, you need to explore and experiment. Important note, the throttle grip has tabs underneath that secure the rubber from 
not moving around these tabs only fit the original grip if you want to install a different grip you'll need to file down these tabs or replace the entire throttle assembly with a smooth one Replacing the seat wasn't motivated by a desire to change the motorcycle's appearance. Soon after riding the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 for a few kilometers, I realized that the original seat was too low and uncomfortable for a rider of my posture. To clarify, I am 185 centimeters tall and I weigh 93 kilograms. Several solutions exist on the market for replacing the stock seat. One of the options is the Black Remy touring dual seat produced by Royal Enfield itself. Now just to make it funny enough, I purchased the seat twice on eBay. Unfortunately, the first time, despite the seller showcasing original photos in the listing, they sent a poor quality counterfeit seat. Now this seller did everything they could not to give me my money back. Even though eBay authorities were involved, even though that the seller eventually sent me the shipping ticket, it was useless. I just wasn't able to send it back. I only lost my money, time and nerves. Thankfully, the second purchase was successful and I received a genuine product that is looking awesome the quality is perfect i know you would love to hear more about this seat i will do a proper assessment maybe later for now let me move on with the next topic The Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, being a classic motorcycle, lacks certain conveniences, including a windshield. As I mentioned earlier, due to my relatively tall stature, speeds above 110 km starts pulling me off the bike. This is happening because of a relatively flat shape of the both the original and the replacement seats, causing the wind to slide right off me. I ordered a Chinese-made windshield crafted from plexiglass, designed for the Triumph Speed Twin 1200. The mounting required a minor modification involving trimming about 3 cm of the plate. Afterwards, it securely attaches with just two screws. The shield is manufactured by Moto XXUN, or however you read it, and comes in four colors. Black, transparent, silver and carbon. On AliExpress, it's available for just $35. While it's not substantial enough to make a significant difference while riding, it does alter the airflow sufficiently to prevent being pushed backward from the seat. I've already dedicated a separate video on my channel to the adjustable rider foot packs, including an extensive installation guide and insights on the changes of the leg position on the motorcycle. The foot threads are produced by Tech Bike Parts in Great Britain. I had to acquire them directly from the manufacturer, which included uh, a relatively high cost of shipping along with the custom duties. The total expense, including shipping, exceeded $150. Installing the footrest is a straightforward process and they deliver on their promised adjustment range. The only minor drawback is the thickness and finish of the footrest itself. Although they look great, I would have preferred a flat rubber pad similar to the original foot bags for a more comfortable ride. While technically an additional accessory rather than a modification, I will include it to the list. I wanted a securely mounted saddlebag using a dedicated rock. Among the numerous options available, I specifically looked for the one with soft canvas panniers. Ultimately, I opted for SW Motec and a one-sided pannier from the Legend series. I may cover this in a future episode. It's truly excellent, although the method of fastening it with three strings traps and buckles can be quite annoying. As for why I only have a pannier on one side, the frame and the pannier for one side alone cost nearly $300. I absolutely love the front fork lock gator. They look fantastic and if I can get them installed, I am willing to pay any price for them. The ones currently on my motorcycle are the original covers manufactured by Royal Enfield, which came with the bike when I purchased it. However, it seems that this is an option that you have to pay extra for when ordering a new motorcycle. 
This is the most expensive modification I've made to my bike. The SNS race only exhaust cost over $700. I already asked to install them before even picking up the motorcycle, so I haven't heard and haven't tried riding with the original ones. The sound without the baffles is ridiculously loud and powerful. But there are days when I don't feel like drawing so much attention and meeting every police officer I come across. Currently, I ride with the baffles installed which efficiently quietens the exhaust. In fact it's a bit too quiet for my taste so if you have any suggestion to slightly increase the volume please let me know in the comments. There is plenty information on the internet about the DNA filter, with many people discussing the noticeable increase in the engine responsiveness and power. Personally, I haven't noticed any difference. The motorcycle still starts and runs the same way, and the sound is identical to when the factory filter was installed. The last significant change on the entire motorcycle is the switch of the colors for the tank. While white and red are the national colors of my country, I don't feel comfortable riding a motorcycle in those colors. I have already discussed with a painter who will change the tank color to something similar to a nardo gray. In the meantime, I covered it with a satin gray foil. I must admit that the quality of the wrapping, which I did myself, is quite poor. Everything was already starting peeling off except for the stripes on top of the tank which still look good and remain intact. So the final result is $1700 which is way more than I expected but that's just how it is when you own a motorcycle and want to modify it. You need to be ready to pay for it. And how much did you pay for your modifications? Did you calculate them?